All right, moving on, number 24. Uh, the domain of square root of x plus 1 and square root of 7 minus x. So you might be able to figure out what this one is just thinking about, like, what's the biggest number that you could plug in for x's? Just think of the possible values that you are allowed to plug in for x. Uh, like, if you try to plug in the number 10... Uh, you would run into a problem up, or sorry, you wouldn't have a problem up top, but when you try to plug in 10 to the bottom, you would run into an issue because you can't do 7 minus 10 and then take the square root. Can't take the square root of a negative. Uh, and then you might think, what's the biggest possible number? Well, it's going to be related to this guy down here. Uh, the biggest possible number is going to be 7 but you can't actually include the number 7 because it would cause a 0 in the bottom. <clears throat> and then you would need to think about what's the smallest possible number. Well, the smallest number is going to be like how far to the left on the number line. The smallest number has to do with the top part. Like you cannot plug in negative 5 because it would give you a square root of a negative. But you could plug in 0, because you can do 0 plus 1, and you could even do negative 1. All right, negative 1 would be your, uh, your lower bound, your lower limit. Okay. Uh, what I would do is I'm going to take this x plus 1, and I'm going to say that has to be greater than or equal to 0. So x has to be greater than or equal to negative 1. Just minus 1 for both sides. And then you'll take the 7 minus x. And you say that has to be greater than 0. Uh, not equal to. And then you solve this one. Uh, move the 7 over. You get negative x is greater than negative 7. And then divide by negative 1. And you'll get x is less than positive 7. Now, both of these things have to be true. <clears throat> Excuse me. X has to be bigger than this, and it has to be less than this. So you actually have a small window of solutions on this. It's got to be between negative 1 and positive 7. Those are the, uh, the only numbers you can plug in for X here. So, like on a number line, it would be negative 1 to 7... You would include negative 1, but you cannot include the number 7. It would be like that. Uh, the other way that you could write the answer is if you used interval notation, it would be negative 1 to 7. Right, parentheses represent the open dot. And then uh, the other way, if you wrote these, if you wrote this compound inequality, uh, I don't, I don't know if it has a name, but if you wrote it the other way, it would be negative 1 is less than or equal to x is less than 7. All right, x is less than 7. That's that half. And then x is greater than negative 1. That's this half, but you have to kind of read it backwards. Uh, moving on, number 25, what is the domain of this? You'll take that 3x plus 9, and you're going to say that has to be positive. It's got to be greater than or equal to 0. <clears throat> uh, move the 9 over, divide by 3, and you're going to get x is greater than or equal to negative 3. So x has to be bigger than negative 3, but... Again, on this one, you cannot include the number 5. So, but x cannot equal the number 5 because that would cause a division by 0 in the bottom. So, you can choose any number after negative 3 to plug in, but it cannot equal negative 5. Or, sorry, it cannot equal 5. <clears throat> Uh, that'll be good for this video. We're going to get to the quadratic ones next.